Hey, welcome to Farley's Library. I'm glad you could come. No, I'm not dressed the way I usually am. As you can tell, I'm wearing a costume. That's right, including boots and a crown. Yep, I'm the king, king of books that is. Well, anyway, I'm dressed this way because I'm taking my family to Linden, Michigan to watch the Flushing Players perform Sleeping Beauty. That's right, a real live performance of Sleeping Beauty. No, you don't have to wear a costume to see the play, but I think it makes the experience that much more enjoyable. Hey, it's going to be a great show. Maybe you should come, and if you've got a costume, Maybe you should put it on. So grab your costume and let's go. To start things, the director gives an introduction to the play. Then the narrator, accompanied by his trumpet player, starts to tell the story. The first scene involves the entire cast. The cast are the actors and actresses who play roles in the production. This scene is a birthday celebration for Princess Aurora, also known as Sleeping Beauty. Everyone was invited, including fairies. Look at those fairies. They celebrate with music and dance, and the cast members actually play the instruments. See the girl playing the flute? I think they've forgotten someone. That's it, Tormentia. Isn't her costume unique? Anyway, Instead of celebrating, Tormentia cursed Aurora so that on her 16th birthday, she would prick her finger on a needle and die. Well, the other fairies modified the curse so that Aurora would not die, but fall into a deep sleep instead. The next scene shows Aurora's 16th birthday. She meets Tormentia in the woods where Tormentia is sitting with a spindle. Look at that spindle. Isn't it a great prop? A prop is an object that actors use to make a play more realistic. Anyway, Aurora pricks her finger and slowly, slowly, slowly drifts into a deep sleep. The others find the princess and the fairy puts the entire kingdom to sleep. Just look at how well the cast does at pretending to be asleep. In the final scene, a hundred years have passed, easy to do in theater, and Prince Charming finds Sleeping Beauty and the rest of the kingdom sleeping. He gives the princess true love's kiss. I'm sure that was the actor's favorite part of the play. And she wakes up. Not only does Sleeping Beauty wake up, but so does the rest of the kingdom. The prince and princess get married and they all live happily ever after. Aurora, will you marry me? Yes, I will. Hey, wasn't that a great show? I mean, I enjoyed every single second of the performance. And who was your favorite character? My favorite character was the villain. There's nothing like a great villain to make a story enjoyable. Hey, have you ever wanted to be an actor or an actress like the folks from the Flushing Players? And have you ever had an opportunity to play a role in a live performance? Well, if you haven't, or even if you have, you'll enjoy this book. This book is called Audrey. It's written and illustrated by Dave Wammond. In this book, a young lady gets a chance to perform in her school play. Well, she thinks that she's going to get the starring role. But boy, is she in for a surprise when she gets cast as a tree. Can you imagine that? How do you think she's going to handle it? Well, why don't we open the book and find out? Audrey, written and illustrated by Dave Wammond. Audrey had always known she wasn't like everybody else. Her dad said she danced to the beat of her own drum. 
Her mom said she always liked to do the unexpected. Her dog Ernie said meow. Even Audrey's dog liked to stand out from the crowd. Audrey didn't mind being different from the other kids. She believed it was important to think for herself, but not everyone appreciated her unique style. Sometimes Audrey felt lonely. Still, she didn't let anything get her down for long. Audrey knew how to make the best of any situation. When her teacher told the class they would be putting on a play, Audrey was excited about starring in the new show. Okay, not starring, but appearing. Despite her disappointment, Audrey vowed to be the most unique tree ever. But her teacher had other ideas. On the night of the performance, as Audrey stood waiting for the curtain to go up, she started to get a bad feeling. Before long, Audrey could see that the play wasn't going well. Milton forgot his lines, Amir was hiding behind a prop, and Trish? Well, Trish was having a clumsy moment. Audrey knew that it was up to her to save the show, and there wasn't a minute to lose. I don't remember any of that from rehearsal, said Audrey's teacher. I improvised a bit, said Audrey. You were supposed to be playing a tree, said the teacher. I decided to branch out and really blossom, said Audrey. Audrey's teacher might not have appreciated her performance at first, but her classmates sure did. After that night, Audrey had to work a bit harder to be different. But somehow she managed. Her name was Audrey, after all. The End Boy, didn't you just love Audrey's story? And weren't you as surprised as I was to see how well she handled being a tree? I mean, she owned that role and made herself the best tree she could possibly be. Well, if you liked that story, I'm sure you'll love the other books that I have to share with you. The first book is called La Familia Bola. It's written and illustrated by Monica Carretero. This book is about the roly-poly family. They live underneath a variety theater. And each member of the family has a special talent. Some are dancers, some are singers, some are actors, but they are all great performers. One day, they get an opportunity to put their talents to use. If you want to see how they do that, all you got to do is open the book. The next book is called Starring Miss Darlene. It's written and illustrated by Amy Swartz. In this book, Darlene wants to be a star. So she signs up for a theater class. And yes, she gets roles in some great plays and becomes a success. But just not in the way that you and I might expect. Well, how does she do it? To find out, you just have to open the book. Some of the most famous plays written in history were written by a man named Shakespeare. And if you like theater like I like theater, you probably love Shakespeare, but reading it can sometimes be a bit confusing. Well, this next book will make that a little bit easier. This book is called Shakespeare Can Be Fun. It's Hamlet, and it's written by Lois Burnett. 
In this book, Lawrence Burnett makes reading Shakespeare a bit easier. As you read the story of Hamlet, you can also read letters and journal entries written by other kids as the characters in the play. There are letters and journal entries for Hamlet and for Ophelia and many of the other characters in the play. This is a great book, especially if you want to be able to read some Shakespeare. All you got to do is open the book. Well, that's all for this week. Be sure to check out our website at www.farleyslibrary.com for more information about this week's featured books or to read some of the articles we've posted. If you've missed any episodes of Farley's Library, you can also watch them on our website or on YouTube. You can also follow us on Twitter at Farley's Library. Till next time, keep reading because reading's fun. And if you need a book, come take a look. Bye-bye. If you need a book, come take a look.